How you doing guys? Welcome back to Learning English with Lily. In today's class, I'm going to give you four fantastic pronunciation tips to help you sound more native. Pronunciation is about mouth shape, tongue placement, breath. It's about copying what you hear. But sometimes it's really hard to identify exactly what it is that native speakers are doing and therefore it's difficult to imitate. So these tips are aimed at helping you break down those pronunciation barriers, feel more confident and sound more natural. The first tip is about connecting the words you say. Let's take the adjective beautiful and the noun lake, for example. Beautiful ends with an L and lake begins with an L, right? But listen to how I connect these words. Beautiful lake. Beautiful lake. What do you notice? That's right. When we have a word that ends with a letter and then the next word begins with that same letter, we actually drop the last letter of the first word. We don't repeat that letter because it doesn't flow. So we don't say beautiful lake. We say beautiful lake. Beautiful lake. Beautiful lake. So if we have the words it was such and we say them quickly, we connect them, it becomes it was such. It was such. Okay, we can put these together. It was such a beautiful lake. It was such a beautiful lake. Something to note is that T's and D's work in the same way because they sound so similar. So listen to the question, what do you do? What do you do? Okay, the T at the end of what disappears because we've got the D at the beginning of do. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? This question confuses quite a few students, even more advanced levels, because they think it means what are you doing, but it doesn't. What do you do means what is your job, okay? What do you do in life to earn money? What do you do? What is your job? If you want to know what someone is doing right now, then you need to use the present continuous. What are you doing? Now, listen to that question again. What are you doing? What are you doing? Notice anything? Yes, the T of what has actually moved over to the next word, R. So we say, what are, what are, what are you doing? So, if you have a word that ends in a consonant and the next word begins with a vowel, a, E, I, O, or U, then that consonant moves across to the beginning of the word that begins with the vowel. So, what are, what are. We don't say, what are you doing? We say, what are you doing? My next tip is to be aware of silent letters. This is particularly important with everyday words that you use a lot. Comfortable, for example. We spell it comfortable, but we pronounce it comfortable. 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 Chocolate. Okay, so spelt chocolate, but said chocolate. Chocolate. Interesting. Okay, so this is spelt interesting, but we say interesting. Interesting. And that brings me on to my next tip. Learn about letter combinations. When you put certain letters together, then new sounds are made. This obviously depends on accent, okay? But for me, for example, TR together doesn't make the sound TR, it makes the sound CHR, okay? So interesting becomes interesting, interesting. And even though that E is in between the T and the R, it's silent. So we say it as if it was a T and an R together. Tr, interesting. 
the verb try, for example. We don't say try, we say try, try, try. Another combination, okay, the letters D and R together become a dr sound. So we don't say, oh, my clothes are dry. We say, my clothes are dry. Or an android phone. We don't say android, we say android. And last but not least, we have my final tip. Remember the schwa. If you've never heard of the schwa, well, it looks like this. It's a lazy vowel sound, uh, and it's the most common sound in English, especially in connected speech. So if I ask this question slowly and I enunciate, can I have an apple? There's only one schwa. It's in the second syllable of apple. However, if I say it quickly as a native speaker would, then more schwas appear. Can I have an apple? Can I have an apple? Can becomes can and an becomes un. And this is because they are unstressed words in that sentence. Can I have an apple? If you want to learn more about the schwa, then I have two very informative classes on the most common sound in English. You can check out the link to the first class above. Okay, I think that's enough for today, don't you? Four fantastic tips to sound more native. But before we finish, let's have a quick recap. Number one, connect your words. Okay, so a little lemon becomes a little lemon. And what is your name becomes what is your name. Number two, don't forget those silent letters. Okay, so it's not chocolate, it's chocolate. Number three, learn the sounds of different letter combinations in connected speech. And finally, number four, learn about those schwas. They're everywhere. Okay, that's all for today. Please make sure you have subscribed. I'll be back next time with a class full of interesting English, of course. I'll see you then. Okay.